Yeah, absolutely. It would. Um, it's always a pleasure to share this with with women, particularly because I think we can get so caught up in the various roles that we play, whether it's mother, sister, friend, and we can lose sight of ourselves in amongst that. And and this cycle in particular, once you have an understanding of it, I think it gives you a real sense of place in your life and in yourself, which is actually very empowering. And on top of that, I think as a society, we tend to focus a lot on um, young women and youth and the benefits of, of that particular part of our lives. And actually, when we understand this cycle, we see how much power there is available to us in the later stages of our lives as well. So to start off with, what this is, it's, it's a cycle of womanhood, essentially. So it's about understanding that as a woman, we go through these really potent phases in our lives. And not one phase is more important than the other. And right up until we decide to move from this realm into the spirit world, we are here in a really vital role. And it's really important to understand that because I think we're like, oh, when you get old, it all just seems to kind of peter off far from it. So understanding firstly that it's split into kind of four distinct areas. And we start off with the birth area, which is essentially when we come into the world. So to give this a shamanic twist, if you like, which might just, you know, we'll do some mind bending here. Um, it's really understanding that when you come into this experience, you come in as spirit and you choose your mother and your father, not because they're wonderful, but actually because they both have various character traits, good and bad, that are going to serve your personal growth in this life. And they act as a portal, if you like, into this world. So we come into this world and we're gonna do this from a woman's perspective. So I'm gonna focus on a girl that comes into this world and, and we see this whole cycle kind of playing out on a clock face, if you like. And we see this kind of coming in from what we call the maiden aspect. And this is when you come in at birth, you've chosen your portal and you arrive in this, in this life. And it's called the springtime, this first quarter, if you like. It's like the maiden period. And in this period, as you are with spring, you're kind of, you've got this freshness, this optimism, this zest for life. And when you get to the 11, 12, 13 mark, you have what used to be called the menarch, which is your first blood. Now, this is a whole other subject, but briefly, you know, coming in and having your first blood, this used to be back in the day in indigenous communities, the sign of you moving into womanhood. And this was a really powerful transition period for young girls. You used to get taken to a red tent where all the women would gather and honor you for moving into your womanhood. So it was honored. You would then spend, as you still do these days, your teenage years doing various things with boys and with all kinds of situations where you're in essentially just finding your boundaries, discovering yourself. You're going through this learning phase. And, and this is a really important time because the mistakes that you're making, so to speak, are really informing you about the woman that you want to become. The idea being that the more mistakes you make about certain things, the clearer you get on what you no longer want to do. So as you move out of this maiden period, you get to the age of around 25, you move into what's known as the mother period. And this is from around 25 to 50. So this is known as the summer period. So as you see with summer, we have the um, everything, you know, the birds and the bees have done their thing in spring and now things are starting to come into blossom. They're coming into fruition. And as you move into that period of your life, you're, you're creating family you're giving birth and it doesn't necessarily mean to children you can be giving birth to a business you know you're giving birth to yourself to this new version of yourself and in the process again making mistakes but discovering more about yourself in the process motherhood is very much seen as an initiation period and really understanding more about who you are and actually what you're capable of you know women today manage children at home and a business often 
or their, you know, or a big career or whatever it might look like, as well as, you know, looking after the family, the husband, the partner, whoever that might be. And they're balancing a lot of things. So women are really powerful and often not giving themselves the credit that's due to them, rather focusing on what they feel they're getting wrong or what they feel they're lacking. I'm not being a good enough mother. I want to um, talk about the concept of integration here. Um, mm. So, you know, we're, we're moving through these aspects of ourselves and, yeah. and yet often we're looking back on the timeline. And one of the things that we've done together, which, you know, is a bit woo-woo for some, but definitely to me, it's like fast-tracking therapy by, you know, 20 sessions, is mm -hmm. you, you've um, done this work with me on timeline mm -hmm. therapy, which is kind of like a hypnosis state and yeah. um, you revisit uh, certain time aspects of yourself you go back to yourself so it's yeah. um, the the concept is that you know it's it's led by you uh, yeah. you intuitively know what aspect of yourself you need to revisit mm -hmm. and then you speak to meet heal uh, that aspect um, and then integrate the lessons and the learnings as mm -hmm. a way of moving forward um, with more grace, I guess, for lack Absolutely. of a better experience. Would that be correct? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, what you, yeah, exactly that. I mean, the timeline work, I call it integration work, simply because, you know, what we're experiencing as we get older is an increased level of self-sabotage, essentially. Mm -hmm. And and it comes in various forms. And a lot of it's created by judgment, judgment of ourselves. I'm not winning in this area I'm failing there I'm, my relationships aren't working or my business isn't good enough or I'm not a good enough mother this is all judgment which is actually fostering self-sabotage and so the integration work that I do is actually about yeah listening and returning to those times in your life listening to your body seeing where it's holding these energetic blocks because that's actually how they manifest physically in your being you'll experience you know, a sense of stress, tightness, in some cases, pain and discomfort in your body. And that's where your body's literally holding these stories on an energetic level. And yet we are able to return to those moments in your life. And it's, it's interesting that you mentioned therapy, because a lot of people have said to me, the biggest difference between this kind of spiritual healing work, if you like, and therapy is that this isn't just a mental exercise. This, you physically feel different after this. And it's because in this semi-hypnotic state, this energetic place that we create in the session together, you're able to be basically step back into that version of yourself. And so it's like a 3D experience, if you like. It is, and it's really, it's, it's quite unique. And it's mm. not unlike therapy because some therapists will mm. ask you to revisit whether it's through journaling or hypnosis or um, some kind of guided um, healing mode. And, you know, I, I definitely want to do a session with you regarding plant medicines and um, psychedelics as a mode of therapy, but let's stick to um, this integration work for now. Yes. When you do go back and kind of, as you said, unlock, you know, that block, uh, mm. it does release an enormous amount of energy. And I've definitely come out of some of these sessions and I thought, I look younger. Mm, yes, that happens a lot, actually. And it's literally because your energy in your body has changed. And it is a very visible difference. I want to ask you about, um, you know, the, the, con the cycle that you're talking about really speaks to a more modern time because it wasn't really that long ago where, you know, a 50-year-old woman now is not equal to a 50-year-old woman 30 years ago, even 20 years ago. You know, when, when people kind of throw out memes like, you know, uh, 40 is the new 20, uh, 50 is the new 30, it really is because um, if you think about what was expected from a societal kind of um, perspective and even from a physical perspective, we used to, there was always this message in dress your age, mutton dressed as lamb, don't yeah. wear a short skirt, cut your hair. Like none of those rules, well, certainly in an Australian culture, none of those rules apply. And, um, you know, we, you, you have so many people who are 
more beautiful, more youthful, more sexy, more potent in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s even than they were in their 30s um, because they decided that they wanted to, you know, live their their light. What what would you ha- have to say from an energetic and a shamanic point of view about do you think that that kind of um, external expression Mm -hmm. is a resistance to the cycle that you're in or do you feel that the rules no longer apply therefore you can look be act whatever way you want at no matter which phase of the season or the cycle you're in I think that when you're fully embodying the true cycle of womanhood you look youthful right up until your last day and I think you seek out the most enjoyable pathway of life because you feel at peace with wherever you're at whatever wherever you find yourself on the timeline it's actually only when we're trying to resist our natural cycle that we create the stress we create that suppression you know growing up is something that we want to do from a gaining wisdom perspective we want to um, allow ourselves to mature in terms of our you know, our gathering of knowledge and experience. And most important, all the things you mentioned there about older women doing whatever the heck they wanted, those things are inspiring and empowering because they're coming from a sense of self-belief. And that is the key to all of it. You can see someone who's not spent much time worrying about what they look like in some degree, but if they back themselves 100%, they look powerful, they look youthful, they look all of the things, and that's coming from in here. 